Book Eight, Part One of the Aeneid. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Lars Rolander. The Aeneid by Publius Virgilius Maro, translated by John Dryden, Book Eight. Arcadian Allies, Part One. When Turnus had assembled all his powers, his standard planted on Laurentium's towers, when now the springly trumpet from afar had given the signal of approaching war, had roused the neighing steeds to score the fields, while the fierce riders clattered on their shields, trembling with rage the Latian youth prepare to join the allies and headlong rush to war. Fierce Ufens and Mesopus led the crowd, with bold Mesentius, who blasphemed aloud. These through the country took their wasteful course, the fields to forage and to gather force. Then Venulus to Diomed they send, to beg his aid a Sonia to defend declare the common danger and inform the Grecian leader of the growing storm. Aeneas landed on the Latian coast, with banished gods and with a baffled host, yet now aspired to conquest of the state, and claimed a title from the gods and fate. What numerous nations in his quarrel came, and how they spread his formidable name, what he designed, what mischief might arise, if fortune favoured his first enterprise, was left for him to weigh, whose equal fears and common interest was involved in theirs. While Turnus and the allies thus urged the war, the Trojan floating in a flood of care, beholds the tempest which his foes prepare, this way, and that he turns his anxious mind, thinks and rejects the counsels he designed, explores himself in vain in every part, and gives no rest to his distracted heart. So when the sun by day or moon by night strike on the polished brass that trembling light, the glittering species here and there divide, and cast their dubious beams from side to side. Now on the walls, now on the pavement play, and to the ceiling flash the glaring day. It was night, and weary nature lulled asleep, the birds of air and fishes of the deep, and beasts and mortal men, the Trojan chief, was laid on Tiber's bank, oppressed with grief, and found in silent slumber late relief. Then through the shadows of the poplar wood arose the father of the Roman flood, an azure robe was over his body spread, a wreath of shady rays adorned his head. Thus manifest to sight the god appeared, and with these pleasing words his sorrow cheered. Undoubted offspring of ethereal race, O long expected in this promised place, who through the foes hast borne thy banished gods, restore them to their hearths and old abodes. This is thy happy home, the clime where fate ordains thee to restore the Trojan state. Fear not, the war shall end in lasting peace, and all the rage of haughty Juno cease, and that this nightly vision may not seem the effect of fancy or an idle dream. A sow beneath an oak shall lie along, all white herself, and white her thirty young. When thirty rolling years have run the race, thy son, Ascanius, on this empty space, shall build a royal town of lasting fame, which from this omen shall receive the name. Time shall approve the truth, for what remains, and how with sure success to crown thy pains. With patience next attend a banished band, driven with Evander from the Arcadian land, have planted here and placed on high their walls, their town the founder Palantium calls. Derived from Pallas, his great-grandsire's name, but the fierce Latians' old possession claim. 
with war infesting the new colony these make thy friends and on their aid rely to thy free passage i submit my streams wake son of venus from thy pleasing dreams and when the setting stars are lost in day to juno's power thy just devotion pay with sacrifice the wrathful queen appease her pride at length shall fall her fury cease when thou returnst victorious from the war perform thy vows to me with grateful care the god am i whose gel of water flows around these fields it fattens as it goes tiber my name among the rolling floods renowned on earth esteemed among the gods this is my certain seat in times to come my waves shall wash the walls of mighty rome he said and plunged below while yet he spoke his dream aeneas and his sleep forsook he rose and looking up beheld the skies with purple blushing and the day arise the water in his hollow palm he took from tiber's flood and thus the powers bespoke laurentia nymphs by whom the streams are fed and father tiber in thy sacred bed receive aeneas and from danger keep whatever found whatever holy deep conceals thy watery stores wherever they rise and bubbling from below salute the skies thou king of horned floods whose plenteous urn suffices fatness to the fruitful corn for this thy kind compassion of our woes shall share my morning song and evening woes but o oh, be present to thy people's aid and firm the gracious promise thou hast made thus having said to gallus from his stores with care he chooses mans and fits with oars now on the shore the fatal swine is found wondrous to tell she lay along the ground her well-fed offspring at her others hung she white herself and white her thirty young aeneas takes the mother and her brood and all on juno's altar are bestowed the following night and the succeeding day propitious tiber smoothed his watery way he rolled his river back and poised he stood a gentle swelling and a peaceful flood the Trojans mount their ships, they put from shore, borne on the waves, and scarcely dip an oar. Shouts from the land give omen to their course, and the pitched vessels glide with easy force. The woods and waters wonder at the gleam of shields and painted ships that stem the stream. One summer's night and one whole day they pass, betwixt the greenwood shades and cut the liquid glass the fiery sun had finished half his race looked back and doubted in the middle space when they from far beheld the rising towers the tops of sheds and shepherds lowly bowers thin as they stood which then on homely clay now rise in marble from the roman sway these cots evander's kingdom mean and poor the trojan saw and turned his ships to shore it was a solemn day the arcadian states the king and prince without the city gates then paid their offsprings in a sacred grove to hercules the warrior son of jove thick clouds of rolling smoke involved the skies and fat of entrails on his altar fries but when they saw the ship that stemmed the flood and glittered through the covert of the wood they rose with fear and left the unfinished feast till dauntless pallas reassured the rest to pay the rites himself without delay a javelin ceased and singly took his way then gained a rising ground and called from far resolve me strangers whence and what you are your business here and bring you peace or war high on the stern aeneas his stand and held a branch of olive in his hand while thus he spoke the phrygans arms you see expelled from troy provoked in italy by latian foes 
with war unjustly made, at first affianced, then at last betrayed. This message bear, the Trojans and their chief, bring holy peace and beg the king's relief. Struck with so great a name and all on fire, the youth replies, whatever you require. Your fame exacts upon our shores descend, a welcome guest, and what you wish, a friend. He said, and downward hasting to the strand, embraced the stranger prince, and joined his hand. Conducted to the groove, Aeneas broke, the silence first, and thus the king bespoke, best of the Greeks to whom, by fate's command, I bear these peaceful branches in my hand. Undaunted I approach you, though I know, your birth is Grecian, and your land my foe. From Artres, though your ancient lineage came, and boast the brother kings your kindred claim. Yet myself conscious worth, your high renown, your virtue through neither neighboring nations blown. Our father's mingled blood, Apollo's voice, have led me hither, less my need than choice. Our founder, Dardanus, as fame has sung, and Greeks a knowledge from Electra sprung. Electra from the loins of Atlas came, Atlas whose head sustains the starry frame. Your sire is Mercury, whom long before, on cold Calenus' top fair Maya bore. Maya the fair, on fame if we rely, was Atlas' daughter, who sustains the sky. Thus from one common source our streams divide, ours is the Trojan, yours the Aridian side. Raised by these hopes, I sent no news before, nor asked your leave, nor did your faith implore. But come, without a pledge, my own ambassador, the same Rutulians who with arms pursue the Trojan race are equal foes to you. Our host expelled, what farther force can stay, the victor troops from universal sway. Then will they stretch their power at worth the land, and either sea from side to side command. Receive our offered faith, and give us thine. Ours is a generous and experienced line. We want no hearts nor bodies for the war. In council cautious, and in fields we dare. He said, and while spoke, with piercing eyes, Evander viewed the man with vast surprise. Pleased with his action, ravished with his face, then answered briefly with a royal grace. O valiant leader of the Trojan line, in whom the features of thy father shine, how I recall Anchises, how I see his motions mean and all my friend in thee. Long though it be, it's fresh within my mind, when Priam to his sister's court designed. A welcome visit with a friendly stay, and through the Arcadian kingdom took his way. And then past a boy the callow down began, to shade my chin and call me first a man. I saw the shining train with vast delight, and Priam's goodly person pleased my sight. But great Anchises, far above the rest, With awful wonder fired my youthful breast. I longed to join in friendship's holy bands, Our mutual hearts and plight, our mutual hands. I first accosted him, I sued, I sought, And with a loving force to Phineus brought. He gave me, when at length constrained to go, A Lycian quiver and a Gnosian bow a vest embroidered glorious to behold, and two rich bridles with their bits of gold, which my son's courses in obedience hold. The league you ask I offer as you write, and when to-morrow's sun reveals the light, with swift supplies you shall be sent away. Now celebrate with us this solemn day, whose holy rites admit no long delay. Honor our annual feast, and take your seat, with friendly welcome at a homely treat. Thus having said, the bowls, removed for fear, 
the youth replaced and soon restored the cheer on sods of turf he set the soldiers round a maple throne raised higher from the ground received the trojan chief and o'er the bed a lion's shaggy hide for ornament they spread the loaves were served in canisters the wine in bowls the priest renewed the rites divine broiled entrails other flood and beefs continued shine but when the rage of hunger was repressed thus spoke evander to his royal guest these rites these altars and this feast o king from no vain fears of superstition spring or blind devotion or from blinder chance or heeded zeal or brutal ignorance but saved from danger with a grateful sense the labours of a god we recompense see from afar yon rock that mates the sky about whose feet such heaps of rubbish lie such indigested ruin bleak and bare how desart now it stands exposed in air it was once a robber's den enclosed around with living stone and deep beneath the ground the monster carcass more than half a beast this hold impervious to the sun possessed the pavement ever foul with human gore heads and their mangled members hung the door vulcan this plague begot and like his sire black clouds he belched and flakes of livid fire time long expected eased us of our load and brought the needful presence of a god the avenging force of hercules from spain arrived in triumph from geron slain thrice livid the giant and thrice livid in vain his prize the lowing herds alcides drew near tiber's bank to grace the shady grove allured with hope of plunder and intent by force to rob by fraud to circumvent the brutal carcass as by chance they strayed for oxen thence and for fair kind conveyed and lest the printed footsteps might be seen he dragged them backwards to his rocky den the tracks averse a lying notice gave and led the searcher backward from the cave meantime the herdsman hero shifts his place to find fresh pasture and untrodden grass the beasts who missed their mates filled all around with bellowing and the rocks restored the sound one heifer who had heard her love complain roared from the cave and made the project vain alcides found the fraud with rage he shook and tossed about his head his knotted oak swift as the wind